Hi everyone, welcome back to our Francy Studios video and in this video we're gonna take a look at this beautiful, beautiful old-timey multimeter. I got this from my grandpa and uh, I still use it because it works just very fine. It's a bench multimeter but also it can be used with batteries. This whole section, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, uh, is the battery that you can remove with a simple screw just take it off and uh, there's nothing in it but this is supposed to be the battery battery holder uh, but yeah this is just a dummy and uh, here I connect the power up with these uh, pins and this is the whole unit this is called a uh, Norma and some numbers. There is not much on the internet about these, just a couple of uh, mentions on the radio museum site. But we can read the German inscriptions. Uh, yeah, there is two plastic uh, holders that screw onto the threaded rods, so I can remove these. And it will allow us to see what's inside of this beautiful, beautiful machinery. This is the two plastic little screw. And this is inside. Let's see. It isn't it a thing of beauty? You cannot see such beautiful things nowadays. It's all well organized. Every IC is socketed. We have these very, very beautiful analog to digital converter ICs and this uh, MM1451 1CP. I believe this is a 7 segment BCD decoder. It's all socketed and you don't see resistors laid out like this anymore. So well planned and so well put together. It's it should be legal. It's 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 pornographic, <laughs> so to say. It's all double-sided PCBs. There's so much trimmer pots everywhere. Trimmer pots here, trimmer pots here. This whole big assembly down there. It's all part of this rotary switch. It's crazy. It takes up so much space down in there, and it's crazy how big it is. Maybe you can see this, uh, the shearing here. This is supposed to be one of the measuring circuits. And look at this, we have spark gap. <laughs> That's crazy. It's a glass enveloped spark gap. And we have some coils here. Here is all the ICs for the digital specialists. Yeah, I believe these are the uh, analog to digital converters. I'm kind of familiar with these. This is a BCD decoder, uh, seven segment decoder for the built-in seven segment display, which is also very beautiful. And we have some trimmers over here. I believe this is the uh, measuring circuitry. And this is the display and uh, logic circuitry. Here we have some additional trimming uh, resistors. Uh, this is an uh, afterthought, I believe. This, I believe, this should be the shunt. And we have this huge, huge resistor here. This is an uh, addition, I believe. This is actually not a bulge. <laughs> it, it looks alright. You cannot see something this compact and beautiful beautifully built anymore. All of this should be in one IC nowadays and and that's alright but but when I see something that's built this uh, compactly it's only the I don't know space gear things or very specialized instruments. If you could open an Apollo module from the Apollo era space race era things uh, they look just just like this. You can see how much thought is put into organizing all these RC components. 
these resistors. There is not much to it, it's pretty simple, uh, but yet so well put together. Let's see the bottom. This is, I believe, the measuring circuitry. Here is the one of the analog measurement units. And there is some measuring circuitry behind all these uh, trimmers. So for someone like me, this is quite pornographic <laughs> material uh, because look at it, it's, it's so beautiful. So much thought and so much engineering is put into this. We have this uh, rectifier circuitry over here and everything looks pretty fine. None of the caps are bulging. All these resistors seem pretty fine. There's no burning, nothing. It can even work for an additional 100 years after, after this, so... So it's crazy how much engineering has been put into this. It's uh, actually wild. When I say things aren't like they used to be, I'm thinking of this. If, if you take apart anything nowadays, it is not, uh, it's not on par with this one. And mind you, this was built a half a century ago, so remember that. And it will easily work for another half a century. Now show me something mass-produced e-waste that will withstand a hundred years of work. You can't make something that lasts and can work 50 years or 100 years down the line. Thank you for watching this episode. I hope you found this exploration quite interesting. I'm sure I did. If you want to see my projects, subscribe to this channel. That supports me hugely and it's totally free. And we are approaching a thousand subscribers, so you can still be in the first 1000. And if you enjoy this, don't forget to give it a like, so the YouTube algorithm knows that it's worth recommending. And as always, have a very wonderful day. Francis signs off.